I've had some things over the years that were just disappointing. Anybody ever thought something was going to happen and it didn't happen? And when that happens, you can have a real, and there's nothing wrong with it, really. There's like a grief. It's like, man, did I cause that? I've done things that, that delayed it, um, bad business deal, and it was my fault. And there's times where it just wasn't even the Lord. He just blocked it. So God's kind of got his own timing. <laughs> and uh, he says he's never late, but I would say he's never early. Can I get an amen? It's like, man, he's kind of like Nicole, you know, it's like. She ain't never early. But we're in a hurry, and we're like, God, hurry, 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 hurry. And God's not in a hurry. And so waiting is not something that we like to do. The waiting's not a word in our vocabulary that we go, man, one of my favorite, favorite things is wait. I don't even like to get on the scale in the morning because I don't even like my weight. Come on. <laughs> Just wait. So we get in a real hurry and think, man, no, 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 no. We want immediate gratification. We want it now. And, and waiting, even at a, at a red light there at Sunset, you'll be familiar with this here. If you've never been to Sunset Hills, raise your hand if you've never been to the Sunset Hills campus, St. Louis campus. What is wrong with you people? you got to go up there. Eh? Um, but there's a red light outside there that literally you will need a haircut <laughs> between the time you get in that red light and by the time church starts. And I don't even blame, like people, picked Dom told me the other day, he said, here's a new trick. You guys can learn this. He said, you know, how there's this red light over here and here. If that's ever red, just go over here because this one goes quicker and faster. There's all, people got all kinds of tricks to get into church. And sometimes I sit there at, at you know, 7 o'clock service or whatever, and I'll watch people align to get in the building. It takes you 30 minutes to get in there. It just, it just takes too long. <sighs> Aggravated about that. But we never like to wait. And when we do wait, we gripe about it. We get upset about it. I, th I think one of the greatest stories in the Bible, really, of waiting is when Lazarus, who loved Jesus, he was a partner in Jesus' ministry, and he dies. And when he dies, Jesus says to them, he says, hey, I'm coming. And then he waited, and once he found out about it, Lazarus had been dead for two days. I mean, you know, that's a long time to be dead. And then Jesus said, I'm coming, and Jesus waited two more days. So we got four days, and you're sitting there, the sisters are going, I thought he loved us. I thought he'd show up after everything we've done for him. thought we were family, which the church served with the girl track. <laughs> got all my bulletins. What is up with that? God was just not in a hurry. In fact, we know the story now because it makes sense because they said under Jewish tradition back then that if you were dead for three days, there was a possibility that a spirit might possibly go back in the body. But if it's ever four days, it is over, right? And so Jesus had greater glory. There was a greater miracle. It was an incredible story. But at the time, when you're waiting day one, there's 24 hours, and he's dead, you're starting to get aggravated with Jesus. When it's 40, 48 hours, how many of y'all are really getting miffed at Jesus? Come on, somebody ought to shout amen to this. Now we're 72 hours. You're like, forget this, man. I should have been an atheist. What in the world is going on here? Jesus, again, shows up, and he shows up on his timing. So a lot of times what we do is we frustrate our faith, or we get upset, or we get in a low level of a grief. And I believe in grieving. I believe in grieving. But I don't think you need to stay in a spirit of grief. You need to go, hey, it didn't work out, and it was my fault, and all I can do is I can't sit in the dirt and eat worms. i got to get up and get over it. It's my fault. I accept responsibility. Then if it wasn't your fault, you got to go, you know what? I forgive, forget. They outsmarted me. They outwit me. But I've always known this about the Lord. Even when we do make a mistake, and man, I made a lot of them, he always made it better for me. I'm thinking right now of a time where me and Nicole, we had, um, we, we've had this happen a lot of times at this point, but this will help you. My dad would say right now, if he was preaching to you, he'd say, well, I'm going to cut a, 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 a window in this house I'm building, so it'll let some light in. So we had saw a house out in Franklin County, and we, it was everything we dreamed of, man. It had a pool. Huh, kidding me? It had a barn. It had a view that was unbelievable. And the house was just so quaint and beautiful. And, man, we saw it, and we wanted it. And any, anybody ever saw something, you wanted it bad. If you're next to your husband and wife, go ahead and get some points and say, that's what I thought when I saw you. <laughs> Good job, Sheldon. Sheldon's working. <laughs> How long you guys been married, Sheldon? 
46 years, and he's like, I ain't going to let this pass me. That's what I was thinking about you. Who's your daddy? Let's just shell it. 46 years. And we wanted it. We thought we wanted it. Man, we dreamed about the bar. We made the deal happen. And I forget what happened, but somehow they outwitted us on the deal. They outsmarted us on the deal, and they sold it. We were so disappointed. Oh, man. That was our dream bar. It had a pool. That's just it's amazing. And then a few days later, I feel the Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy Spirit is inside your recreated spirit when you got born again. Jesus, we just said a minute ago, where is Jesus? He's the right hand of the Father. I've been seated with Jesus in the heavenly places. So God is on his throne, Jesus' is right hand, and he said, I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And nobody got a knockoff Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's always with you, even when you're bad. Somebody's like, I think I made the Holy Spirit mad, like I was speeding, and he got out of the car. No, he's with you, telling you, slow down. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will be with you always, even in the ends of the earth. And the Holy Spirit of God will lead you and guide you. And all of a sudden, I felt, and this is why it's important to listen to your spirit. I felt, I was driving my motorcycle, and I felt the Lord tell me to go down this road. And I thought, man, I want to go down that road. It's a, it's a gravel road. I got a black motorcycle. It's clean. I don't, and, and it's also dangerous to ride on that road. But just kept going up. Go, 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 go. And I drove down this gravel road. And I mean, it was a long way down this road. I thought, how long am I going to keep going down this road? As soon as I came around the corner, there's a for sale sign in this pasture land. And I drove up to the top of the hill. And there is a brand new, awesome two-story house in this private area. And immediately I saw it. And I, I fell out of love with the house I thought I wanted. Anybody ever done that where you're like, I thought I wanted that, but I was totally mistaken. I want this. And I saw it. I called Nicole. She was at work because I wanted to get a woman that had a job, and she did, and <laughs> she was working. I must have been 7 or 8 o'clock at night, honestly. Uh, she loved to work then, still loves to work now. She came out and looked at it, and the realtor met us. And... We said, hey, Nicole goes, hey, we want to put a contract on it. Because we already just lost a deal. And we also felt like this is a great deal. And long story short, the guy says to her, she said, I want to put a contract on it tonight. He said, I don't want to do it. I want you to sleep on it. I never like to do that. She said, well, then call me another real estate agent who'll write this deal. Come to find out, his friend had wanted to buy the property. And said, I can't do it until I have to do it, but when I have to do it, I'll do it. Call me when there's a contract. So they have, long story, there's too much detail, but I'm just going to do it anyway because you have nothing else to do tonight rather than to talk to you about <laughs> all the dirty details of every situation that happened. We were wearing blue, and we had a Slurpee, and Nicole was in the truck. Okay? And she, he said, uh, the real estate guy, so I'm afraid the person who, they, there was a contract on it, and it lapsed, and I, I'm afraid they might, they might sue us. I'm afraid they might sue us. And Nicole said, oh, you're afraid they might sue you. Well, I can promise you I'll sue you. <laughs> now, remember, don't get negative. Like, she wasn't a preacher. She was just Nicole. <laughs> yeah, she's like, there ain't no devil going to steal my house. <laughs> so it was a real struggle. So what I'm saying is God's just not going to just do it for you. Like, well, if it's God, it's God. I don't like those Christians like, well, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. If the Lord wants me to have a husband, he'll give me one. You got to get out of your sweatpants, put on some makeup, and go to the store. You can't just keep doing Instacart. If you're single, no Instacart, unless you look at the guy and he's single and you're ordering stuff every day. Bring me some yogurt. Bring me some toast. Come on, I understand. But for the most part, you need to get, I want to be where the people are. <laughs> Am I making sense to anybody or not? By the way, if you're thinking, where's the service going? I don't know. I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> so we bought it. Fast forward now. That other house never really went up in value. This particular road that was gravel went asphalt. This particular area right here blew up. And uh, I think, how much did we pay for the house? 165000 and sold it for a million. Oh, come on, somebody. If it's God today, it'll be God tomorrow. We say, I sure wish that happened to me. I'm telling you, I wouldn't tell you this if it can happen to you. I wouldn't eat ice cream in front of you. I'd sneak her back behind you. 
I'm here to tell you the same God that did it for me will do it for you. I don't care where your fixed income is, how you're stuck, how your credit's bad, how you've been done bad. Hey, the worst is over and the best is yet to come. God's about to do something supernatural in your life. Yeah. Don't get disappointed. Move on. Isaiah 55, verse 8. Let's put it on the screen so everybody can see it. It says, what's it say? You guys read really well. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your way. Verse 9 says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than than your thoughts. So we must remember that God's timing is perfect. His timing is always better than ours. His wisdom is, he can see way better than we can in the future. How many of y'all did not see COVID coming? Raise your hand if you didn't see it. If you, raise, if, if you didn't raise your hand, you're a liar. You did not see it. Then when you say that, when people do that kind of crap to me, I go, what else are you seeing right now that the Lord's telling you? Nobody saw it. But how many of y'all agree with me that the Lord saw COVID coming? He knew, he's not like, man, I never saw, the Holy Ghost, did you see that coming? I never saw that coming. Who in the world did that? So if he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he knows everything about everything, his timing, he'll actually block, get this, he'll block the house we thought we wanted to give you the house that you really want. Because once I got what, me and Nicole got his, and we cashed the check, we went, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, you want to get some praise out of somebody. Come on, somebody. Go from a hundred and some odd thousand to a million. The Lord knows how to make you. Shut up! God's timing. Think about Abraham taking Isaac up to Mount Moriah. He's going to offer this, his child, his son, his only son, which we know is the type of Jesus. And he takes him up there, and he's getting ready to kill him. I mean, you know, this is very awkward. It's a father and son trip. Dad ties you up, starts a bonfire, gets out a knife. You're never going to be like, happy Father's Day again with this guy. He comes up with it in his hand. He's getting ready to come down and kill, sacrifice, but the timing of God Immediately, he hears a ram in the thicket. And God says, hey, now I know. And I want you to say that with me. Every campus shot, and now I know. And now I know. See, God sometimes needs not only to know, but he needs you to know. At this point, he had worshipped this kid. He'd worked forever to get this kid. He finally got his kid. And by the way, sometimes you can worship your kid or the thing God gives you more than the creator. You know, the guy that wrote that song, I've been seeing it with Jesus in heaven. His name's Keith. And Keith was real poor growing up. My dad, he actually had like plastic ostrich boots and he was preaching for Brother Hagin. My dad took him to Drysdale's in Tulsa, Oklahoma, bought him these real boots and loved on him. And he'd come to our house and didn't have any money and loved the Lord. He was a great Bible teacher. And um, eventually, my dad helped him buy a Corvette. And he said when he got the Corvette, he was like, he's real meticulous still to this day. He was shining on it, and he was cleaning on it, and he spent hours on the car. And he said he heard the Lord as clear as he ever heard him. And he said, Keith, I regret giving you this car. You spend more time rubbing on this car, and you spend more time with this car than you do me. Before I gave you the car, you were in there talking to me, and you were in worshiping to me. Raise your hand if that makes sense. So God's not against you having stuff. He's against the stuff taking possession over you. Oh, my kid's on a traveling team. Well, maybe he doesn't need to be if you can't go to church. Well, let that sit in for the people that are going to take their kid all over the world with money they don't have, taking time with their family. Wearing themselves out because your kid's going to be the next Tiger Woods. I highly doubt it. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. But I do know that what you compromise to keep, you lose. The best thing you can do for a kid is keep them in one place, rooted and grounded in the Word, and let them go from there. I see this is very unpopular. and Oh, man, it's very quiet. Please quit shouting amen. I can't hear myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you right now, timing's everything. 
so we know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fiery furnace. It looked like that it was over. You think, God, God's going to deliver us. I know he is. He's going to deliver us. They bring him up to the door. They stoke it up seven times higher, and they know, I know he's going to deliver us. I know he is. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He's coming. I know he's coming. And then they open it up, and they throw in Shadrach, and they're like, whoa, I thought he was coming. And then Meshach, oh, I thought he was coming. And then they threw the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and now all of them are in there, and it looks like God ain't showing up. But then all of a sudden, they looked in, and they said, it looks like there's another in the fire, right? And there was a fourth man in the fire, and it was Jesus. And Jesus, come on, somebody ought to help me right now. He said, I am in this fire with you. I'm in this trouble with you. I am in this trial with you. And when they got out, they didn't even smell like smoke, which is more than I can say from a lot of the people at our church. But just because you're in the fire doesn't mean you're going to burn. It just means you got a testimony, girl. It just means what didn't kill you made you stronger, and you got to trust the Lord is going to deliver you from death at the right time. I got a statement. You can write it down. That's a good one. If it's God today, it's God tomorrow. You better buy that car right now because yesterday there was a guy in here, and he said he was coming in here this afternoon to buy it. You know what I got to say about that? They always sell cars. Let him buy it. If you don't marry me, if you don't do this right now, I'll get a girl that will. Well, better get a girl that will because this one ain't going to do that. When people pressure you, pressure is not from God. Even giving, I watch some preachers, but I never want people to give under compulsion. We have a generous church. We have a giving church. And the reason why, our church gives and tithes. Me and Nicole are radical givers. That's the reason why God blessed us. So we have a great relationship with God, a great relationship with money. And if God can trust you with money, he'll keep giving you more. But people that are, I better hold on to all that I can get. This, after all, this is all I've got. Well, that's all you're ever going to get if you hold on to it. But when you have a generous giving spirit and you are a, a philanthropist of sorts, you're saying, hey, I don't, I'm not trusting in these uncertain riches. God meets all my needs. So never give under pressure. Man, you need to give and help me. Man, I need this more than this. I watch even people at church sometimes, a smaller church, to tell people at our church, you know, they don't need you over a faith church, a big church. We got a load of piano players. We got a load of ushers. We're here, we got 14 people. Well, there might be a reason why you got 14 people. Got quiet again. There's certain things, St. Louis, they're not really buying into. This is a small group. Just because there's a church and somebody said, I'm a pastor and there's a church, it doesn't bit more mean that they're pastor at church than if I told you I was an astronaut. I am not. This is false advertisement. What is a legitimate church is when the Lord stamps his approval on it and there's an angel upon that church. And we don't have to go fish out of somebody else's aquarium. We don't do that. This is a church that God has put together and God built it and, and men build church. Remember this scripture? It said, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. So that, that implies that, that men can build the house. Daniel in the lion's den. How many of y'all know before he went in, he was thinking, God's going to deliver me. I know he ain't going to let me sleep in there all night. I know there's no Lunesta, no melatonin, no Tylenol PM, no Advil PM. I'm going to get you in a minute. No NyQuil. I don't know what it is. You do your gummies. Whatever it is you got to have. He had none of that. But this guy so trusted the timing of the Lord, said he went in there and he slept and he said, you know, I like to sleep. By the way, this is why I like to sleep. I forgot my belt. My pants keep falling down. I think I bought them too big. When I sleep, that's the Spanish team. We're just going to do it anyway. I like to sleep on my side. I know it's not supposed to be good to you, but I sleep on my side. And then I put a pillow here because I don't want my knees to fall like that. So when I sleep tonight, I'm going to have a pillow here. I'm going to have a big pillow here. And I'm going to get a safety pillow to keep Nicole from groping me behind me. <laughs> this is my sermon right now. <laughs> And I'm going to sleep like this. Daniel is now in the lion's den, and he's like, there's a lion. Instead of running from it, instead he said, I'm going to use it as a pillow. <laughs> and he goes and puts his head up on that lion's den and fell asleep. And the next morning, you know what woke him up? What woke him up was the king that threw him in and said, Daniel, are you alive? He said, huh? Daniel, are you the Lord? Did the Lord save you? He said, he sure did. 
you threw me in a hungry den of lions, but man, I'll tell you what, that's the best I've ever slept in my life, man. It was like a little noisemaker. There's Come on, go with me on this side. That's all I heard. I had the heated pillow and threw that big tail around me to hold me like that. And then he got up. And the timing was off for the other people because when they threw the other people in, the, the lion's been hungry. They were hungry all night, but the timing of God said, I'm going to want a story in 2024, and PD needs to tell people, I got you. I don't care what it looks like. It's not going to eat you. It's not going to destroy you. You can come back from this. Lazarus was dead. Come on, somebody. But God is still on the throne, so don't allow this to be a disappointment. Allow it to be an appointment. Somebody ought to shout amen to this right now. Oh, I'm preaching right now. I got a statement. You're probably going to want to put up your phone for this because it's very beautiful. The team did a great job today. When it's God's time, you can't stop it. When it's not God's time, you can't force it. Isn't that good? So when it's God's time, ain't nobody stopping it. You can't stop it. I'll get out of the way so you can get it so nice. Let's all read that together. What's it say? When it's God's time, you can't stop it. When it's not God's time, you can't force it. Sound like a little, little words to live by. So if you live and you think, well, I lost it, man. Could have had that building. Could have had that house. Could have had that man. You just wait. Check that guy back on Facebook 20 years from now. You'll be like, Glad I didn't force it. <laughs> when I think about my dad and his life in ministry, standing on his shoulders, a lot of great qualities about my dad. And one of the greatest qualities I think that he had, really honestly, was his prayer life. Like he and the Holy Spirit, way before Benny Hinn wrote a book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, my dad was all about that. He talked to the Holy Spirit, didn't like to even ride in the car with anybody. He just talked to the Lord and listened to Brother Hagin. We watched TV, watched Cowboys, Lonesome Dove, 14 hours of your life. You just never get back. But he was always listening on the inside. And I would say that's one of the, one of the secrets that I got from him was I, f I listen in here, and the Lord is speaking oftentimes on the inside, and he'll say stuff to you like this. There's another slide. Enjoy where you're at till you get where you're going. I'll be happy when I get kids. No, you won't. I'll be happy when I get a house. I'll be happy when I get a jet ski. I'll be happy when I get a faster jet ski. I'll be happy when I get a boat. These are all things that have batteries in them that die. The more stuff you have that you think is going to make you happy is probably just going to aggravate you. I know a lot of you don't even understand what I'm saying, but it's a problem. You'll get to your point to where if you get a lot of stuff and you acquire a lot of stuff, I promise you this will happen to you. And some people raise their hands that's there, some wealthy people in our church. and um, You'll get to a point where you go, this is too much, man. I need to simplify too many batteries. Batteries, 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 batteries. Too many cars got to be inspected. Too many plates got to be here. You'll just simplify. You'll, oh, man, we got so many floors. Look at our house. Look how big our house is. There's a time where you get older like me and you get hungry in the middle of the night. And I don't want to walk all the way downstairs to get a snack. <laughs> I know these are like, man, these are champagne problems. I'm just telling you, we enjoy where you're at right now. There's something, I mean, there's a quality. Last night, like 2 in the morning, I got hungry. I had to walk all the way downstairs. Griped in the cold of the day. I'm like, man, I'm starving in the middle of the night. I had to go downstairs. Because she's like, you know, she said, if you're wondering who it is that's cleaning up all the wrappers in the middle of the, in the morning, that's me. I said, well, I try to stay in an attitude of sleep, and sometimes I need a, you know, I got a protein bar or something, I ate it, and I just left it there. Sorry about that, but I get and I said, you know, I'm trying to stay in an attitude of sleep while I'm eating and go back to bed. She said, it's too much information about where we're going here. So, uh, she says, uh, well, what, have you ever thought of just about putting it in your room in the middle of the night? I said, I don't want that because then I'll just for sure eat. I try to discipline myself and go, man, if I got to get all these pillows, we talked about this, move this pillow, move that pillow, walk all the way downstairs. But sometimes I just get starving. Anybody else in the middle? I just got to eat in the middle of the night. 
Now she's like, well, at least put it in the laundry room. Negotiate with me. She tried to get me heavy. <laughs> so jokingly, there's something to be said about living in an apartment, and all it is is your bed, and there's your refrigerator. <laughs> Come on, enjoy it while you can. You got a big house clean. You got one place. You're like, there's my rug. There's my dishwasher. There's my dryer. Come on, somebody. It's just not, it's efficiency. Y'all don't like this. So wait, you, I promise you, when you start paying taxes on this, you'll go there. <laughs> Psalms 27, verse 14. A couple more minutes. Wait for the Lord. I want to get on a dating site right now. The Lord's taking too long. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. And again, he says, Wait on the Lord. Two times in that little short verse. Wait. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, I'm sorry about your wait. So when you're waiting, I think the easiest way to wait is to just be cool with waiting a long time. My dad used to say this. He said, when you make a decision... And it's a decision of quality. And you know, come hell or high water, you're not changing your mind. You won't be waiting long. But when you're double-minded and you're an ambivalency and you're thinking, well, maybe, well, maybe I won't. Maybe if God doesn't, I will. No, you burn the boats and you go, this is it. That's done. When you make that kind of decision, everything changes. Then you won't be waiting long. So you, you know, for instance, on dating, I, I believe it's right for you to have the right person. But I remember in my own life, um, forcing it, I fell in love when I was like 16. Looking back at it, it was a premeditation of the mother and the mega pastor that in town that wanted me to be the student guy and me to be his successor. Now it makes perfect sense. Didn't see it at the time, though. I thought, oh, I'm in love. Got married when I was 18, married for eight years. Well, that's a long time. It never was right, never was healthy, it never was happy. Right away, they started saying, you know, your problem is your dad, your problem is this, you need to come up here with us at our church. This is a big church of thousands of people in St. Louis. And I remember my dad one day when they, we went through counseling and so on, and, and that guy called my dad and said, you know, you need to release him and let him come up here and blah, blah, blah. And my dad said, hey, you did a terrible job raising your kids, so you don't have a successor. I'm doing a great job raising mine. Don't call me back and leave my son alone. That was a very embarrassing day for me. <laughs> but I'm just kind of putting you in the head of my dad. That guy, by the way, has no successor. He's older now. He really needs to be able to go do what he needs to do. 20 years came and went. My dad went on to be with the Lord. And I built a church in our city that's just as big as that church, plus all the other churches. It went on to be the biggest church. At the time, in my mind, I was believing their stuff, saying, you better, and your dad's holding you back, and you'll never amount to anything. Got 180 people. We got thousands. And if I had done what they wanted me to do, which you compromise to keep you lose. Number one, I wouldn't have Nicole, which means I wouldn't have Austin, which means I wouldn't have Ashton. And if I don't have Ashton then, or, or Austin, then I don't have MJ. And if I don't have MJ, I don't have LA, and I don't have Linux, which means I have nothing. Okay, see what I'm saying? So you see through a glass darkly, and you think, yeah, and I'll, I'll be over there at that church following those rules, dealing with that board, and I couldn't say, I didn't mean it. Yes, I did. I couldn't say half the stuff that I get to say because when we built a church that we all love, we just do it. We do what we want to do. If we want to do Juneteenth, we do. If we want to sing, give myself away, I feel the Holy Ghost shout, or, you know, we start breaking into a secular song. Our church is very unique. There's no church like this church. I wouldn't have liked it over there. And God blessed me with bigger over there. In fact, when, there's more information than you probably need, but in fact, our city was so big and so close to that church, out of good conscience, I called that guy and said, can I have lunch with you? Because I, I didn't want to build that church, even though our crowds are totally different. We don't have the same kind of people, same kind of theology, nothing. But I told him, can we have lunch? And his executive pastor was my mother-in-law. 
and Nicole went to lunch with my ex-mother-in-law, and we asked for permission to build our city. And I said, I won't buy that building, and I won't build that church if you say no. It was the honorable thing to do. And they both gave me and Nicole their blessing. My whole point is, if you go way back, I was married to her daughter. They had plans for me. But just because man has plans, God's got plans. And your dad might have had a plan. Your mother-in-law might have had a plan. But I don't, I don't like this thing. Well, you got to do what's good for you. No, the, what's good for you is obeying the Holy Spirit. And so what's good for you is going to church. What's good for you is getting a group. What's good for you is I don't feel like going to church. We didn't ask how you feel. I don't feel like working out. I don't. Billy in Sunset Hills, he's flipping rip now. He's one of our facilities guys, and he's got a pastor's heart. And I told him yesterday, I said, man, I don't feel like working out. So today, at like 6 a.m., I got a picture of him with a tank top on, ripped and shredded. And he goes, just a little motivation to get you up today. <laughs> Vascularity, his veins are popping. Janice's wife is like, he needs two pillows between him and her. <laughs> just a little motivation. You don't feel like working out, but you don't ask yourself how you feel. You tell yourself how you feel, and your feelings will follow because God's got great blessings for you, but you're thinking it was him. You're thinking it was her. You're thinking it was that. You're thinking it was this. Listen, when you show up and it's on God's timing and his dime, you're going to love what he does for you. He's about to blow your mind. Last statement I put up today that I, they, they made, and I want to show it to you. It says, what God has prepared for you will blow you away. Keep the faith, don't give up, and you will see the goodness of God. Keep the faith, don't give up, you will see the goodness of God. Now, before we stand up, because you'll kind of move around and break your flow, I, I got a couple questions. Number one, do you feel like you're growing on Tuesday nights, like increasingly growing? Two, do you feel like tonight that the Holy Spirit spoke to you, even beyond my sermon, but he was dealing with you about some stuff, and you got a little more clarity than you did at the beginning of the night? Raise your hand. Come on, I see you, Ferguson. Some stuff. Again, I want to get you really conscious the Holy Spirit is a person. And when you leave tonight and you get in your car, you're alone, talk to him. Holy Spirit, thanks for being in there tonight, man. I felt you have conversations with him. I talk all the time. That's what I love about AirPods and stuff and car phones now. Back when, I, before all that technology, I just look like a crazy man talking to myself. Now people think I'm on the phone. I'm just talking to God. I'm t talking about what's going on. He talks to me. In fact, most of my sermons, I ride on the back. I'll, I'll, I'll ride them in a car on a motorcycle and run through the stories, run through the, you know, Daniel in the lines, then laying on a pillow, all that. You can't make all that stuff up in just a minute. It takes time to put all that stuff together. But the Holy Spirit puts that stuff inside my spirit to get your attention so tomorrow you'll realize if it's God today, it's God tomorrow and just because this looks like a, a, a disappointment, it's probably actually an appointment to get me ready in fact, I'm going to save and get ready we have a statement on our staff called, I, I said it today at staff meeting, save and sow and get ready to grow, save and sow and get ready to grow save and sow and get ready to grow so I said as a church, we're going to keep saving we're going to keep sowing, giving other ministries and outreaches we're going to save, we're going to sow, and then we're going to get ready to grow so we're even doing budget cuts because we believe that we're probably, there's only a few churches that have two major campaigns going at one time, we have two crazy construction projects that are costing millions of dollars that we don't have believing that it's going to change people's lives and I believe it is but I believe that we have to do our part God's going to do his part. But I want everybody at our church to be together on this because Fairview Heights and Lake Worth, and I believe there's another church in Florida because I don't want to be in the high school forever. God's got some good things for us. And if we could see it right now, we'd go, you got to be kidding me. And it, the same thing is in your life. Stand up with me. I want to pray with you and for you. God, that God will give you a revelation of his timing. One statement that I didn't put up, but I'll share it with you before we go, is faith include, faith in God includes faith in His timing. Because sometimes when you're disappointed because it didn't happen, you got to go, let it trust Him. We had something recently happen, and our family was a little disappointed about something, and you can kind of feel it. Some of us ate ice cream. I'm not telling you who that's going to be, but it could have been me. And the next day it was Nicole. She ate the leftovers. Um, and you get disappointed about stuff. But we all just kept saying, when one was low, the other one would get high and go. 
it's an appointment. It's an appointment. We're going to be ready for it. We're going to be better prepared for it next time. Because God's got it. Isaac and this little gal down here, I think they get married, what, 19 days? 19? How do I know that? Because I saw Isaac yesterday. I said, Isaac, how long? And he said, 20 days. 20 days. Ah, 20 days. He just looked. I was like, man, you see, he knows. When Isaac was in St. Louis with us on the team, he's been at the church for 10 years. He didn't see what God was going to give him. And God led him down here. He started serving on the team. All of a sudden, this beautiful girl with a job. Come on, do you hear me? Yeah. With a job. Good heart, so sweet. He can't believe it. I love Isaac. He's like my, my son. But even I go, Isaac, like God really did something for you, man. Like, don't screw this up, Isaac. Oh, no, sir. But you might have missed the part where I said, 10 years. 10 years. David was 15, and he said, I'm going to be king. He was 30. 15 years. Golly. If you're going to be doing something. So you might as well do it waiting in faith. Just chill. Everything's going to be all right. Stretch your hands toward me. I want to pray for you at Ferguson at Sunset Hills. There's no distance in prayer online at home. Holy Spirit, I ask you tonight to come and touch people's hearts so they understand that you are in love with them. That your love for them is not based on their performance. You just love them. And God, they will accept that God's timing will be perfect timing. God, even when you come, we don't know when you're coming. We know you're coming soon because we have all the biblical prophecy signs of everything that's going to be happening. It's all there. We know you're coming, but God, we're just waiting and we're building churches and we're, we're serving Jesus with a heartfelt passion until you come. God, I ask you tonight to set and seal this word on the inside of your church. God, the people that are believing God for a spouse, people that are believing God for a healing, people that are believing God for a business, a breakthrough, whatever it is, just, just picture it in your mind's eye right now. Start visualizing that thing coming into manifestation in your life. If you can see it, you can be it. I rebuke Satan's power over your life to get you in a negative vein. No more negativity, only positive. We rebuke that thought. We're not moved by what we see. We're moved by what we say. And God, I just decree and declare right now that they're healthy, they're wealthy, they're wise, they're loved, they're talented, they're strong. And God, just like Lazarus, it looked disappointing day one, day two, day three, and day four. But on day four, God, your resurrection power brought him up and out and brought him out of those clothes. And what a miracle we saw. And if you did it then, you'll do it again. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen. Hey, thank you for watching Faith Church on YouTube, and I want you to subscribe so you can know whenever we go live and post new content. You can also comment below and let us know if the message spoke to you. When you're watching, also know that we want to pray for you. We want to know what's going on in your world, so you can comment below and we'll pray for you. Thanks again for watching on YouTube, and we'll see you next time.